Adam. Thanks for joining us. We're True Treats, and this is week 14. This week, we have the St. Louis Rams versus the Seattle Seahawks. For the Rams, we're making a mustard choli, and the Seahawks, we're making a tiramisu. Hope you guys enjoy the video. To start the mustard choli, we're going to begin by cutting up our mushrooms, onions, and slicing some basil. Next, we're going to preheat a saucepan with some olive oil, add the sliced vegetables, as well as some garlic. Meanwhile, we will place a large pot with water and some salt and add the most choli when it begins to boil. When the vegetables are done sautéing and the onions become translucent, we're going to add the ground turkey. You can also use sausage or ground beef, but we chose this for a lighter meat. Add a little salt and pepper and allow the meat to brown. In the True Cheats kitchen, we like to save a lot of time, so while everything is cooking, we're going to shred our mozzarella and parmesan. After the meat has fully browned, we're going to add our homemade tomato sauce. You can check out how to make our tomato sauce from our videos of making pizza. It always tastes better when it's fresh. After the noodles were done boiling, we put them in a strainer. And now we're going to use the same pot to add our sauce as well as add the noodles. This way we can cover the noodles fully with the sauce and it all can be well incorporated. In the large baking dish, we're going to put half the noodles. Be sure to have your oven preheated to 350. Shift those around and put the mozzarella layer on top. Top of the mozzarella layer, you're going to add the rest of the noodles and spread them evenly all around. And then you take your parmesan and spread it all on top. Now that it's covered with cheese, it's ready to go into our heated oven, uncovered for about 15 minutes or until it's melted and a little brown. After it's done baking, allow it to sit for 5 minutes before serving and enjoy. It's time for dessert. We're going to begin the tiramisu by making the lady fingers. The first step is separating the egg whites to the egg yolks and adding some sugar to the egg yolks. We're going to beat those until they're thick and creamy, add a little vanilla and our sifted flour and set aside. While our egg yolks are resting to the side, we're going to beat the egg whites until they're foamy, add some cream of tartar, and beat them till they have soft peaks. Then we're going to fold those egg whites into the yolk mixture and prepare by folding it in and putting it in a pastry bag. When squeezing onto your baking sheet, try to stick around 2 inch sizes. This makes it easy to get off the oven and works perfect inside a tiramisu. The biggest trick to these lady fingers is when they come out of the oven. They have a tendency to like to stick to the pan, so while they're still warm, use a spatula to scrape them up and place them on a cooling rack and they'll be easy to work with from there on out. The next step is making the creamy filling for the tiramisu. We begin by taking some egg yolks and sugar and place on a double boiler till the sugar is melted, the eggs are cooked and thick, and be sure not to curdle. Remove the egg yolk mixture from heat and add the mascarpone so it melts in there and becomes nice and creamy. In another bowl, we're going to put some whipping cream and whip until it has thick, stiff peaks. When the whipped cream is ready, we're going to slightly fold it into the egg yolk mixture and set aside. The last step is making strong coffee or espresso and mixing it with rum extract or you can use rum as well. Now it's time to layer the tiramisu. Start with the lady fingers and soak each one with the rum coffee mixture. Next, we're going to add the whipped cream 
cheese filling on top and spread evenly and repeat again the later fingers coffee and whipping cream i like to use a spring form pan so afterwards it's all settled you can remove it and it looks gorgeous after you're finished with your last layer what I like to do is top it off with some cocoa powder sifted on top and some chocolate shavings. This makes it look nice and also adds a nice sweet layer to it. To make chocolate curls, I use a potato peeler on a chocolate bar and it makes it look oh so nice. Now you just refrigerate and enjoy. Thank you for joining us here on True Treats for another week of Monday Night Football and some delicious meals. We hope you'll check out the links down below for more information that we couldn't fit into this video. Always check us out on Facebook, Google+, Twitter. Send us some comments. Like us, favorite us, subscribe. Let us know how we did. Send us some ideas. Maybe you'll end up in the next True Treats video. And always remember, keep on cooking.